Miles Bonnie Show episode two, two, with uh, Jock Max. Um, I'll let you introduce yourself because I don't know, you know how you how you uh, view what you do. Uh, uh, Jock Max Thomas. I uh, DJ. I produce. Um, I don't know. That's pretty much it. I I, I MC a little bit, uh, but uh, uh, music lover. Uh, record collector, uh, as far as music goes, that's pretty much what it is, man. Not too much more than that. Alright. I was realizing I often bring you into these sort of settings early on, and I think it's probably just because I, I think you're a worthwhile person to document. <laughs> but um, I was recalling the fact that uh, the first podcast I did, Florence.com, yeah. I... Uh, engaged you in and that was a uh, nice of you to do and at that time I didn't really know you that well right so I was I only knew about um, the vision other people had in the area that were my age such as Joe Good and his brother and uh, all them about who you were and what you stood for yeah. um, since that time we've gotten to know each other a lot better yeah. and uh, I'm appreciative of that um, one thing we talk about sometimes and granted you can handle these questions however you see fit obviously I didn't need to tell you that but um, is like, as with any artist or any person in public life at all, or even in maybe in like a personal life, um, just talk about the way people view you mm. and the way people view anybody, um, myself, the president, Oprah, you know, the grandmother that solves everybody's problems, mm. um, through the years, how has that changed and how do you feel about it now and, and what has the relationship been between you as a person and and how and and getting response from people regarding what you do with music you know how does that whole process work within you you know um i think i take the the way people view me i think at times uh in times past people probably viewed me as unapproachable and somewhat or somewhat kind of an elitist uh just because i am somewhat of a private person but then i think that's changed now because uh me coming out more, a little bit more often, and and, and dealing with people, uh, and and in a, in a you know much more inclusive situation, uh, with you bringing me into the whole NA sound situation, and, and and how outgoing and widespread you're getting this movement and being a part of that, I think it's kind of uh, giving me an opportunity to meet more people, and so it's not viewed as oh he's off over here and on doing what he's doing, you know I think. It's finally coming to light that I'm I'm a regular dude. Like I have a starving artist mentality, because I think that's how I think of myself. And so, I think that's changed. That everybody knows that you know now. Not everybody. Hopefully, the majority of people realize it. Well, you know, he's not easy. He's just like us. And so that's pretty much it. Why do you think people have that view of you? Just because I didn't get out much. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I know that's exactly why. I'm, and because I kind of dealt in my own, you know, so many more artists were more outgoing than myself. But I kind of stayed in my own bubble. Yeah. With who I dealt with and, who, and you know, who I chose to work with and, and who chose to work with me. So it was kind of a small a small group of individuals. And so, you know, not many people penetrated that. And, and so people kind of looked at it, you know, had the misconception that he's this, he's that, or he doesn't mess with you or he won't. But... I, th I do my I do my best to try to break that down whenever I can talk to people. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, as you said that, I was thinking about that in Kansas City, especially the rap scene, but um, maybe in all the, uh, probably not in all the other genres, but um, it's always that balance, I guess, being an artist or just having choices in general as to who you work with, who you don't. Mm -hmm. And it's not always about the music. It's not always about that it's a different style. Um, like around in Kansas City, you have the kind of like, traditional, more kind of sample based, if you will, like, and some I, you know, what used to be called conscious hip hop, thankfully I haven't heard that term in a while, <laughs> but um, versus, you know, the more, whatever the other would be, kind of West Coast, maybe more like car based, car based, as opposed to headphone based, maybe, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way. Kind of East or West Coast, I mean, it comes down to that. Yeah, that's that's what it comes down to more. Yeah, I, but just to say, um, it's not, that's not it. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. Sometimes just a matter of time. Do you have time to work with people? Right. Um, I know myself. I 
I, I want to work with way more people than I have time to. Mm -hmm. And when I say I want to work with you, I really mean it. Yeah, it's um, sincere. Yeah, I just don't have enough time. So, right. anyway, that wasn't at all the thought I meant to uh, state, given your <laughs> comment, but um, yeah. I don't know. It's funny. I'd like to, uh, well, let me see if I have this on me. All right. It's a, uh, it's a note. I'll get it later. We'll take a break. All right. But um, DJing. Mm -hmm. You've been DJing since I was twelve. All right. Professionally, I started when I was nine, and I'm uh, thirty-six right now. So. Yeah. How has it changed <laughs> <laughs> since then? A lot more, a lot more cast of characters, man. A lot more DJs. That's the most noticeable change. Um, what to be a DJ back then when you started? What was required? It wasn't popular, man. You had to like technology wasn't where it is. Of course, that's an obvious thing. But then uh, more dedication. You know, what I mean, things are, are way more accessible now. And I don't necessarily look at that as a down as as a bad thing because I've I've benefited from from things being you know accessible far as far as music and technology I've benefited from that but mm -hmm. it was more like you did it because you were internally moved if you were in this part of the country there was yeah. there there weren't many external factors that kind of prodded you in that in that area like you weren't doing it for the girls you weren't doing it for the girls you weren't doing it because you saw a lot of DJs at events you went to and you decided after seeing them right. that I want to do that. You did it because it was really... And, and I'm not knocking DJs now. I know yeah. many of them feel this way. Yeah. But primarily you did it because you loved the music. It moved you and you just had an internal desire to do it, to play to, to present people with new music, to push it forward, and to, and to be that selector, to be that. And so, to me, that's what it was then. And I was young. Like, all the DJs that I came up under were, were like, grown men. Yeah. You know, like, and that were on the circle when I was coming up. They were, like, you know, they had kids and houses. And, and I was a kid, man. I used to get dropped off at my first residency by my mom and picked up. You know, I was just, I was that young, you know. And so... It was just it was an internal thing. You were you were kind of isolative. It wasn't as social as it is now. You know you had to stay home. You whenever dudes went out and and, and hung out and, and enjoyed, um, you know social activities. You were trying to find this record. Or you were trying to master this thing. Or you were trying to better your skill. Why do you think? So I mean I know I never practice and I'd like to, but is that that's basically part of what you're saying is that nowadays. What's, I mean, what is the difference? Because you have this full breadth of history of understanding, but when it comes down to it, you're saying people nowadays that are DJs for the most part, and I, I'm not trying to generalize, but mm -hmm. what the difference is that they just kind of do it because they want the flash of it, they want whatever they perceive to be a, a D, being a DJ is, like like a uh, a cool graphic on the front of your of your computer or something, carrying around cases or something. Yeah, and, 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 and not all of them. Yeah, not all of them. Just like you, I don't want. I don't want to make a general statement to kind of blanket everybody no. that DJs now because I know a lot of these guys are dedicated. But um, now, the practice, the learning, the trial and error, a lot of that's still there, but not to the degree it was when I was coming up. Like you, you know, you just you, you can YouTube things now. You know, there was no YouTube. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you, you can, could YouTube how to do. Anything. Anything. Mm. Anything. You can buy videos. You can buy DVDs. You know, it, it's a. It's probably a DJ in every neighborhood in this city now. And we're in, we're landlocked in the middle of the country. So imagine a coast. You can do anything now as far as DJing. You can learn what you want to learn. What might have taken you months, you can learn in the course of a week because you have it's so much accessible to you that you can just zero in on something as where before. Like I remember, it was a big ordeal when I was coming up. Like slip mats, mm -hmm. like we didn't know. Like we had rubber, you, you mm -hmm. the rubber they platter. Rubber it was just like, yo, how is he? Yeah. How does the record, you know? Because it should slide back. You so know? who would you see doing that? That you then wanted to learn how to do that? The slip mat thing. Of? Yeah, because you were saying like back, like you didn't have YouTube, so you would see other DJs around here. That I saw, I would, I would any footage I could catch of Grandmaster Flash, mm -hmm. of Theodore, of Bambada, of DXT. 
of uh, um, would these be like VHSs? These would be not even VHSs because there was no documentation of it really. Mm -hmm. It would be like blurps on TV mm -hmm. or pictures in a magazine. Like National Geographic was hip because they had a small thing on hip hop, you know, a few times. But just like quick images. Mm -hmm. And so in turn we would zero in on those images and then a lot of it would be listening. But the, the slip mat thing is funny just to show you how wild it was. I had no idea. And so, you know, we were just, we were destroying records, just destroying them because in this part of the country, we didn't know about slip mats. And this is late 70s, early 80s. And then the, uh, MTV had a, had a, um, you know, and we would make do. And MTV had a, had a, a show all called IRS is the Cutting Edge. And, uh, what is that? Does it stand for something? I don't know what it stood for, but I don't, and I don't even know. I'll YouTube that. Yeah. <laughs> And so I ended up watching it. I would watch those kind of things and hope that I would see something that interests me. And lo and behold, I did. They showed Grandmaster Flash cutting out felt. And I was like, ha! Uh. And so I knew then, like, we were using the inner sleeves of the records, the plastic. And they worked. But, you know, yeah. I mean, just little stuff having to figure out. Trial and error, having to learn, having to search for information, yeah. having to search for records. And so... That's right, search for records, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I miss that. I mean, store to store. Store to store, to building. building to building, store to store. If you have family in other parts of the country, begging them, if you know, for records or for tapes or for names. Information was a big deal. This information, like now information comes with a file. Hey, who's the, who does this song? This is who does it, and here it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Information would say it's by a Detroit based group, and their name is so and so. And that was it. Now you had to do the work. You know, so information meaning the information you had about the record. About the record, but now when you get information, you get a file along with it, or a record if you're. Are you fortunate. talking like information from person to person? From person to person. Like, like whose record is that? They'd be like, oh, they're from Detroit. Yeah, they're from Detroit, and the name of the, the band is so and so. But those women yeah. didn't tell you the name no, of the record. Right. It was secretive. Right, right. So, I remember I saw. It, uh, and granted, this was you know, not then, but I saw uh, Kaz DJing at. Um, the wetlands in New York one time mm -hmm. when I was going to high school. Wow. And um, just to say that he, had, I wasn't DJ at the time, and he had all these records and he was playing, and there was one that I really loved, and um, you know, I was giving it a shot. I tried to stick my head in. It was, it was a tight club and just say, hey, you know, what is that record, you know? And then it just kind of got this smile, you know. And then I look at the records, I realize that he has his own, then you know, stickers he puts on him, which you can't tell. And he came from that first school. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of surprised. Because, you know, I'm younger and it's kind of the information age. But mm -hmm. um, I understand. I mean, that's... It was at the same tape, at the same uh, show, they were selling old tapes, you know, of, of old tapes. Mm -hmm. Old audio tapes. But, well, to bring it back up now, I mean... I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of confusing time, huh? Yeah. I mean, to figure out what to do next. Yeah. I was thinking about the other day. I was, all right, so, well, today, actually... I was updating my Facebook page mm -hmm. with pictures from Sweat, which I did last night. All right. Shout um, out to Josh. Yeah, shout out to Josh. Josh did a great job last night. I, mean, I really enjoyed watching him. Um, and I was thinking, like, you know, who, who am I to think that my contribution to the Internet is worthwhile? But that is the whole basis for the internet, I guess. Realizing that everybody's contribution is worthwhile. Everybody. And I think that all I do is kind of try and take it to not necessarily an extreme, mm -hmm. but ex but move past that question, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, led me into another question, mm -hmm. which I'd like to get back to after we um, take a break and hear from uh, contributor B Broker, um, who's going to review a Boulevard beer that uh, he hit me to, that um, we enjoyed uh, the other night. Drew's a lifesaver. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's we'll talk about that also <laughs> after, after the intermission. But um, wait, what is my point? Aha! I got a, I got a letter um, handed to me last night mm -hmm. uh, via third, it was a third party letter. The person didn't even give it to themselves. Okay. Um, I didn't understand that it was actually a letter until I picked it out of pocket along my receipts today. <laughs> and um, read it, and it says something along the lines of, a DJ's job is to play music that people know so they'll dance. So, play music people know. And me being a thinker, and, and not being afraid to uh, take consideration in everything, 
I thought about that a lot, and yeah. I think um, we'll take a quick break. You'll learn a little bit about a uh, a favorite item of mine and and uh, B Brokers, and um, we'll be back to discuss DJing, Jog Max, um, and anything else that happens. So we'll be back in five and five. <laughs> a.k.a. the beat broker, uh, if that ma matters at all. Uh, we're sitting here this evening with the brand new limited edition Boulevard Bourbon Barrel Quad. It's a, a fantastic new creation by our, our uh, local hometown heroes. Forgive me. Microphone. <laughs> Check. One, two. Here we go. Anyhow, uh, the Bourbon Barrel Quad, a uh, limited edition ale that uh, I'm happy to actually be somewhat involved with. Um, this is uh, a, a slight variation upon the sixth glass, which many of you may have tried by now, um, part of the new Smokestack series from Boulevard. Uh, this is an entry from them into the world-class beer market, something that I think that a lot of Kansas Cityans are proud of, and if you aren't aware of it, you should be proud of it, and you should be trying it unless you are becoming an alcoholic, in which case, stay away, because it's a very dangerous creation. It's, it's tasty, delicious, and highly addictive. So, uh, Basically, though, the sixth glass, and what they've done is taken it and fermented it on top of cherries to give it a really, really sweet flavor. And then they um, further sweeten the deal by aging it in bourbon barrel oak, oak casks, basically, uh, for months at a time, and allow it to uh, mature and take on the flavor of uh, what I consider to be a pretty good quality bourbon with the uh, the foaminess and the, um, the alcohol content of, uh, you know, a, a Belgian ale. So, it, I mean, the, what, it's, a, it's higher than your average beer, 11.8%. A single bottle will definitely do you in for the evening. Um, if you drink it by yourself. If you drink it by yourself, yeah. When split between two people, I think it's, it's, it's just right. It's the perfect buzz, and in which okay. case... Uh, the, the ideal situation for, you know, a date, the, a, a little meal, uh, I don't know, you know, I, I'm really liking it. Like I said, limited edition, they they have done a number of these recently, uh, the Saison Brett, they've done an Imperial Stout, and now the Bourbon Barrel Quad, which, uh, this one's the most limited yet, this particular one is number 7,121 of 10,630 produced in total, and, um, that, that may sound like a lot to some, but... You know, when you consider the mar the market the Boulevard now covers regionally, that's not a whole lot of bottles to go around. And so if you can find them in your local grocers or liquor stores, please pick one up and enjoy one with your dinner. So. Well said. Okay. I have a quick question for you, sir. That was expertly done. Um, I learned about this from you, so I appreciate that. Uh, I also learned about where some are, so I bought some of those today. Sure. Thanks again for that. Um, they're almost, they're not being made anymore? Uh, they will make them again at some point, yeah. This is one that, actually, they have another batch aging as we speak, but uh, as to when they'll be bottled and released under the market, that remains to be seen. They're they're trying, they're experimenting with different lengths of time uh, with the aging process. Uh, and I think that they're they're letting different batches age at different amounts of time to kind of see how they turn out in terms of their, their maturity levels when they hit the market. Um, so I think it'll, it could be within the year that we'll see another batch. We just brewed another batch of Saison Brett. I say we brewed. I'm not actually a brewer, but I am involved in the labeling process. Uh, the label master is what people call me. It's kind of a lame title, but, but that is... Can I give you some labels that aren't approved to just slap on a few? Uh, sure, sure, absolutely. No, you don't. Yeah. I don't get you. I can easily slip some in. That's the beauty could of my you? job is that uh, anything we wanted to do to make a, a limited edition one of one bottle could could happen. Um, so. I think, uh, yeah, I think the uh, TMBS needs its own mm -hmm. single bottle. Sure. All right, well, I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, the beer review. And to all of you out there uh, who can get Boulevard, please do. And if you can't, um, too bad for you. <laughs> Move to Kansas City. That'll all change in the near future, though. All right, Thanks. cheers. All right, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that. Not an advertisement. We just like stuff, and you like stuff, so hopefully... Uh, you love stuff. You might like the stuff that we like. Maybe. And if you like some stuff that I might like, 
Share your stuff. Thank you. Uh, we were just talking about Asa. Asa Barnes. Congratulations, Asa. American Idol uh, participant. You're going, to you're going to Hollywood, Asa. Yeah, you're going to Hollywood. Wow. Um, and we will be in Hollywood to film the process. No, we won't. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could. That sounded so good. Yeah. I was like, I believe, what? I believed it too. For about a millisecond, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be there. Not. I don't have the, 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 uh, I don't have a lot of things. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, good for him, man. Asa, uh, for those unfamiliar, is from Kansas City, singer. Um, I met him through Joe Good and Jazz while we were recording, um, getting the sounds good stuff together. He's actually on both of our albums, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did a, he won a competition on 95.7 around here a while ago <clears throat> that uh, got a song on the radio kick which it. yeah kick it which I produced and Joker rapped on and jazz song. recorded and Ace is saying and yeah it's really it was solid I like that commercial radio attempt um, but yeah you know if he wins if he wins you know then I swear I'll split all the profits when I use his name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I wish him. I'm very excited. Wish him the best. I wish you know. Best. I heard he he tried out last time and didn't make the, to get on TV or whatever. Huh. Um, thinking. I guess thinking at the time was that he was maybe not crazy or like <clears throat> absurd. Not edgy enough. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's obviously a very level-headed guy. But mm -hmm. Asa Barnes, um, congratulations to you and your family. Yeah. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know. I d at the same time I don't put American Idol on a pedestal. Nah, I don't. I don't watch it. Yeah, no, I don't really either. I I liked the beginning. I liked um, Fantasia. Actually, I missed most of that season. I like Ruben Stuttered at the time. Be honest with you, I, I saw like probably one finale and like probably thirty-seven minutes of clips of uh, uh, highlights <laughs> of all. Seasons. Oh, total, total. In all of like all your years of all yeah, yeah. Like I saw right. I saw the confetti fall on Ruben. <laughs> Um, do it. I saw Fantasia. I couldn't what? miss that mouth. She had a big mouth. <laughs> so I saw that. Is, yep. And then um, water. I saw Kelly Clarkson. And I was like, she, yeah, hey, Kelly, that's what's up. And then uh, I, I see it in passing. My daughter watches it, but I had to put it out of my room when she watches it because um, I can't take all of that. Man. <laughs> I saw William Hung. Was that the uh, uh, she bangs? I saw him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I seen Paula drunk on TV. Yeah, man. She was faded, wasn't she? I, she, you know, I'm not trying to get a personal life too much, but yeah, definitely. There was something going on there. She looks together this season. I don't know why they brought on that other girl. Because something's wrong. With That's Paula? Why, yeah, they got to have a backup. Like, that thing. Also, when Paula's drunk, they have another Oh, uh, when that thing falls Personality oh, to... The crazy bus is coming. <laughs> It'll be there to get us shortly. Uh -uh. And so the other lady's just gonna slide right in. Seems man. self induced though. Yeah, it does seem self induced. And I, I which is which is why it's more acceptable to call a crazy bus. My wife and daughter love that show. Uh, Shout out to my wife and daughter, Nikki and, and, and Imani. Shout out to y'all. Cheers. Yeah. <clears throat> um Okay, here's a letter. Mm -hmm. There you go. And this is this is how I got it. So I was handed this, and I was like, third "What does part? that even say?" So 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 the person who wrote it didn't give it to you. No. So whoever wrote that letter, that was a sucker move. Molly. Hi Molly. Hi, that Molly was a Lawrence. sucker move. <laughs> I don't be, care. I mean, this is. <laughs> I'm not this. You, Molly, that was a sucker move. Right. You ever heard of a sucker move? What's a sucker move? A yeah. sucker move <laughs> is when you when you do something like you know what I'm saying like yo. Yo, yo, put yo, I'm, 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 I can't stand that dude right there, man. And you tell somebody, you, you know, to, to do something to him or put his tires on the flat, and, and somebody does it for you, but then you're like, yo, take the rap from me. Are you ain't big? Are you, are you spray something on their locker, punk, in school? And then yo, so and so said, oh, so and so said you was a punk, but so and so said it wasn't said. That's a sucker move, Molly. <laughs> Molly. Why'd you have to do it to me, Molly? Why'd you do it? Why was, why'd you, yo, you played yourself, Molly. No, no, no. Can I read Molly's letter? Yeah, please. Let me read Molly's letter here. <laughs> now nah, I'm animated. I'm heated. Like DJing it. isn't about what you like. Wrong. It is. It's about what the people know. Not so much. That's how you dance. <laughs> Wait a minute. 
It's about what the people know. That's how you dance, Molly. Molly, I I assume that you're in college. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna back up this one. Can you play something? They know. See that there's a sucker move. She really wanted to say, "Can you play some?" I know, but she said, "They." Molly, you're not taking responsibility, baby. You gotta take responsibility for what you say. This. I don't like how you DJing because I don't know some, none of the records you playing. That's what you should say, Molly. <laughs> uh, this isn't a. Uh, and to be all fair, you know, because we're not. Molly, not, Molly doesn't know. She doesn't know the word. Well, Molly, I don't hate you. I love all people. Molly, I like you. Because I give you a little credit because you was gutsy enough to write it. But then you really didn't say what you meant, sugar. What's wrong with you? What is this? So what is, all right, so let's go back one more time. Read the letter, please, if you will, and then, right. and then give your interpretation. DJing isn't about what you like. I don't like the music you're playing, is what that meant. Okay. It's about what the people know. I don't like the music you're playing because I don't know any of the records. That's how you dance. I don't like the music you're playing because I don't know any other records and I can't dance to them because I don't like them. Can you play something they know? I wish you would play something that I knew so that I could dance. Love, Molly. Does it say love? Oh, there's a heart. It got a heart. Yeah, there's lots of hearts on there. That's why I don't have it's to It's one heart here. A big heart on the front. Molly. She tried to creep in with some love that wasn't, wasn't true. That wasn't love, Molly. Alright, um, but yeah, so obviously this isn't necessarily just about Molly, and you know, it's about, um, uh, it's about other things such as, uh, okay, so here's what I was thinking. Okay. Um, our cameraman is not doing a very good job today, I apologize. He's fired. He's, he's, he's on that Paul Abdul. He's so fired, he's rehired. Alright, so, um. All right, DJing is not like being a um, a chef. It is like being a chef. It is. Except for I will I will say, when you come into the restaurant, you don't get to pick your food, and you don't get to get to the chef. That's true. The chef is in the back. <laughs> He's hidden. But um, and in a lot of cities, that's how it would be also. But not in Kansas City. We will get to carrying our own turntables, Jack. Because I know that's something that we discuss frequently. <laughs> I. I, I Unless you want to go in now. But here's, let me finish my thought, because I'm kind of all over the place in general anyway. And I, I understand, too, Jock is a, is, a, is a bigger man than Drew. So it's hard to get us both in one, in one frame, because a lot of man. In, this is a lot of man in your screen right now. It's a whole lot of man meat <laughs> on the TV right now. All right. Um, here's what, all right. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to turn this into a half an hour conversation. See what you did, Molly. No, I'm just, I'm just sorry. Uh, all right, so um, if I were a bad DJ, I probably wouldn't get any jobs to DJ. Considering that people ask me to DJ, and that is what my schedule is composed of, I don't. I rarely. I'm only beginning to come up with ideas and present them to people because there's lots that's not going on that other people aren't conceiving of that I do so I'm trying to do the world a service and my creative energy a service by pursuing those things mm -hmm. but in the meantime um, second how about that second what music would you like to hear me play at that moment. And this goes out to anybody that gives me generic statements such as this. What would be the songs that, in your estimation, everybody here would know and be so excited that I'd play at that moment? Because if, they, if that was easy, given that I don't know these people really, and I don't live in this Lawrence anymore, um, it's a social thing. I don't think that's easy to judge. And even if it was, if I were to only play songs that I thought would maximize my crowd pleasing ability at that moment why am I even there you know I mean you, you might as well just Point have a computer do it or something like yeah. I don't care like I'm not a I, I think it goes to the range of like wedding DJ like solely to um, maybe making your own turntable records let's say mm -hmm. that are just scratches and stuff okay so that's the, the breadth of DJing when I DJ, I like to, I came up with this term recently called the music ceremony. And it sounds a little grandiose, but when it comes down to it, I basically, I think, uh, a music therapist to a degree 
in a club setting. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to drag people down. I'm not trying to give them... Obviously, if it's late at night, I'm trying to keep it up tempo. Normally, in my sets, I start out slow and I get faster. That's how I do. I also start out, perhaps, if I'm going to get real known to the known songs, I'll start out obscure. More obscure and then get to the stuff you know. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if, I, if I'm going to play this, uh, an event where there's lots of pop involved, and I'm planning on playing popular whatever, you know, products, then I will get there. But I'll tell people if they ask for it early, can you play this song? And I'll be like, I'm play it later. I don't I mean I'm definitely not gonna play two pop hits in the same the same one on the same night. I'm not gonna be the radio and play it like four times within, you know, two hours or whatever. So I'm getting off track here, Jack, but it doesn't matter. It's nothing against Molly. Um, not it's just not. It's not. Here's here's the problem I have. It's not an easy answer. It's it's hard. It's, it's it lingers. That whole aspect of DJing of, will you play this song? I know this song. I want to hear it now. Um, and if you don't, I have it in my iPod in the car. Can I bring it in? And that happens nowadays. That's also something that didn't happen when DJ started. And in most cities, they would just. It wouldn't be an option. But around here, DJing this frequently, uh, being a. A, a part of a setting in nightlife, event, restaurants, all over is is at its height, mm -hmm. as far as I understand. I, I don't. You would know, but yeah, it hasn't been this widely accepted. And I DJ so many different types of events because I enjoy so many different types of settings mm -hmm. that what I play at different places does change. But people that follow me to any degree in any of those places often understand that I have a certain taste mm -hmm. that they enjoy most of the time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop there. I mean, what what do you have to say about the rest of that stuff? Because it is complicated, and to Molly and all the other Mollies out there, Mollies, um, the Mollies, the Mollies. That's is that it. the new quoted? Whenever DJs started here, started right here. You saw it here. Mollies. All right, let them know. DJs, now, yeah. Finish the statement. DJs, whenever somebody comes up to you and asks you to play a record. They request it, they want to hear it now, they know everybody will love it, play it now, you got to play that, do you have this, play something we like, I want it, that's a molly. That's a molly. We just, we turned it. Alright. So it's complicated. I think, as someone who cares about things and cares about people, I find it fascinating that I have a difficult time getting to the bottom of why requests of a DJ, particularly myself, because, you know, I'm me, uh isn't really doesn't really make sense to me people try and talk about you don't go to a uh, scientist in their lab and be like yo um, that's the wrong temperature um, why don't you change the temperature and you're not even invited in the lab really you know you the lab might be an open lab that day you just walked in this office yeah. and started touching his beakers Pretty much. And then you're like, well... Petri dishes. Yeah, Petri dishes. And you're like, well, you don't have that one type of gel in your Petri dish? Mm. I have a new Petri dish in my car. Yeah, you should use Can this microorganism. Me... Yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, go back to your own lab and, and use your Petri dish. That's right. I mean, to all the Mollies out there, be a, become a DJ. Please I become a DJ. Because if you... This is the thing. This gets back to all aspects of music and creation. And I'll stop in a minute, but... Well, who knows who I will. <laughs> Molly. All right. You know, if Molly was to be a DJ... She wouldn't be competition for me because she would be able to do that and I could go back to doing what I want to do, which is what I do anyway. You would. So there is a place for you, Molly. Become a DJ. <laughs> That's the answer. You know, I'm not being facetious, even though I've never heard the definition of that word. I need a Webster. Um, MW.com. That's what I use. M-W, I think it is. But anyway, become a DJ, Molly's. Uh, be a DJ. End a discussion. If you don't like me as a DJ, glad you have an opinion. That's better than having none. Better than having none. I don't actually agree with that statement, but, <laughs> but I, I care about you enough to risk to be happy for you. I, I like the fact it, it's a it's a double edged sword. Oh, I read a I read a Twitter yesterday about sword. Really? Yeah. Okay. As opposed to sword. Yeah, sword. Anyway. Okay. Tw what is Twitter? I'm old, guys. Email me. Tell me what Twitter is. Anyway, check it out. I appreciate that the Kansas City, Lawrence, Kansas, you know, community is so comfortable and so enthusiastic about music that they'll walk up to this professional who's working and request what they want to hear. They feel so strongly and they're so confident 
and they enjoy their selection that they want to hear so much that they will come up to a professional and say you should play this that's like me walking up to LeBron James telling him you should box out better now I can play ball but I am not a pro but I, I appreciate the fact that, they, that, the, that the Kansas City public feels so strong they can walk up to you uh, the Lawrence Kansas public and say hey do this XYZ but see here's the deal there's also a level of arrogance that goes along with that statement, with that whole mindset. Oh, that's, yeah, good one said. There you go. And, and, because why are you so arrogant to think that what you want to hear right now is what everybody else wants to hear, and you're 100% positive that it's going to go over, that it's going to be fine? See, that's not the case. Because I've done that. I've given in to people. I like to please crowds. Uh, fortunately for me, with the events that I'm playing now, I don't necessarily have to worry so much about it. Now, I will drop a few gems on you, a few crowd pleasers to, to keep you invested. <clears throat> but the times when I have done that and I've played something that you've requested, or, or Molly has come up to me and, and been very strong-willed, I played it and it bombed. She skedaddled into the back of the into the back of the <laughs> restaurant. She took a little drink and played a salmon. She's, and she's not dancing. Slipped anymore. into the darkness and was looking at me with the rest of her friends like, "Why did he play that?" And it's happened every time. <laughs> that's some low. That's a sucker move right there. But that's the thing too, because people don't know that it was a request you fulfilled. And I'm I'm the one that's taking the heater. Yo, you blew it with that one. Right now, fortunately for me, I couldn't care less about clearing the dance floor. Yeah. That doesn't bother me at all. Shouts to Jesse De La Pena. Shout to Jesse De La Pena, one of my favorite DJs on the planet. Jess will clear a floor and not bad enough. And I and I really kind of got the courage and strength to do that by watching Jesse because he does not allow you to keep him in the box. Shout to Jesse, big Jesse. And uh, but that's it. You know, my thing is that's too you're too arrogant when you do that. Like you know, we 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 DJ here. People have us because we are. We are there to push things forward. What's the benefit of you hearing the same 50 songs you hear at home when you're vacuuming, when you're cleaning, when you're bathing, when you're driving to that job you hate, when you're exercising? What's the benefit of you hearing those things? Those songs remind you of stuff you hate. You should come hear something new. <laughs> come hear something you never heard before and leave wondering what it was. That's what it's about. A DJ's job is to push things forward, to give you a little bit of what you know, but to broaden your horizons. You know, we have a pretty difficult job. So I'm going to tell all the Mollies right now, whoever see this, stay away from me. Don't come up to me. You can say hi. Don't ask me for nothing. No, I'm just playing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, here's the other part, though. It's, and I'll think about this, too, because I'm kind of devil's advocate. Um, it might be arrogant for us to think that we it's know that is yeah that we know, <laughs> right? But the fact is, <laughs> we some, do. Yeah, someone decided <laughs> that we do because that's why they asked us to be there. <laughs> They've already given us that little, you know, uh, blue ribbon. Yeah, and it's Paps not, blue ribbon. Paps, yeah, not for you, for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, that's that's the bottom line. All right, I think we've I think we've gotten. I don't know. It's not about getting a point across. It's about trying to trying to sort through the. Confusing discussions. Yeah. I, here, I'll, I'll leave it. I already said that like 10 minutes ago. I don't know if this is going to be the last thing I'm going to say about this. But here's the thing I'm willing to go there to play stuff that people want to hear blatantly, even if it's, you know, the Humpty Dance, like all the time. <laughs> I like the Humpty Dance. I like all those 90 songs. There's nothing against that. Even if it's like, you know, low, 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 whatever. What is that? Oh, flow. Apple on. Bottom Jeans or whatever. That was, yeah. that was last year. But. Oh. Um, okay, bad man. If you hired me for like a private event, if I'm at your wedding, if I'm in your house, if I'm um, playing some sort of non-club, Miles Body conceived night. I mean, that's the other thing. I came up with the concept for the night. How are you going to tell me what I'm supposed to play at my night that I named and started? I mean... <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I don't even care, Molly. I'll give her a kiss. You know, say it doesn't matter, but... I'm not kissing you. <laughs> but that's I'm what I'm saying. I mean, point. you know, if but if you're like, hey, Miles Bunny, we need a DJ, and and I know you're actually going to show up, and you're not going to do a bad job, and um, I want you to play in my living room, I'll be like, cool. What do you, what type of stuff do you want to hear? Because I look Flow forward to, to moving around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if that's the case, yo, give me give me a, a data disc of like 200 MP3s. If you pay me enough, I'll play them for you. If you pay me enough, I'll play it for you and sing to a few of them. Yeah, because, it, you know, if you're enjoying yourself, that's kind of the point. But You know what they call those dudes? 
they play the, they come in with the iPods and they just basically play the playlist. They call them mouse jockeys. Mouse jockey. You ever heard because that? because they only use a mouse on a laptop. I I don't know what I don't know where the terminology originated from. All the significance of mouse jockeys, but that's what they were called, mouse jockeys. Like mm -hmm. the iPod guys that come in and they play. You know, right, so but it's more referring to the music they play. Yeah, yeah, rather more than the rather than the, yeah the literal mouse. Like they call them mouse jockeys. So, well, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. If you don't like the music you play. I will make podcasts for free and never leave my house. If you don't like the music I played, then you are totally entitled not to. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and let me apologize ahead of time yeah. for ruining your night, for 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 not allowing, for not helping you to to be as fulfilled or, or to feel as complete when you leave the venue that I am fortunate enough to be employed by for that evening. I'm so sad. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sincere in this. I mean this. I am sorry. But that's all I got. I gotta keep going. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be your symmetrical match. Yeah, my. <laughs> um, all right. What else are we talk about? Um, we have to get to this because, uh, and it's not even gonna be entertaining, but because uh, this is the type of stuff I thought about when I started thinking of the show. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we would sit around in your basement and yeah. talk about like Method Man, and not about oh, wasn't that song great? But like, you and I, we both care about people a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think um, most people that I know do, because if they don't, why would I be friends with them? Mm -hmm. Anyway, Method Man, you yeah. know, like, I think the reason we think about people like that and care about it is because uh, they, in a certain respect, regarding most ways that people view it in society, they've made it. Mm -hmm. They had their shining moment, and yeah. it's a matter of what they do after that. And that's a hard question to answer. Right. Um, regarding Method Man, yeah. it's like, hey, you know when things pop up then once in a while. Like I remember there's this kind of awkward video on the internet where people were talking about his wife or something like that and he got really mad on it. And I'm, I, yeah, absolutely get mad at people talking about your wife, you know, whatever yeah, it is. I would. But it's offensive. What I saw was just like a lot of frustration. And maybe he has a lot going on in his life. I don't know him. This isn't an attempt to like give an advice. But I want this show to be an avenue for constructive criticism. Right. Just like we talked about Molly. And hash through an issue. Yeah. You know, um, because we both own a lot of music, we're aware of a lot of artists, we care about their music, we care about um, the spirit that they have within them that created the music, and we want that to be that spirit to be well. And, uh, you know, Paul Abdul. Paul. Uh, you know. So, um, that being said, who are you feeling nowadays? Like, what do you, what do you enjoy listening to the last couple of weeks, because I don't know if you have a specific week-to-week -week change. I do. I have a day-to-day -day change, actually, which is kind of irresponsible. Well, so what? What? What have you already enjoyed certain things today? I haven't. I have enjoyed no music today. I haven't listened to anything today. What about yesterday? Yesterday, I listened to some Pevin Everett. Which album? I don't who know. Knows? Yeah, who knows? He has a lot. Yeah, He's I don't. Mad Independent. I don't yeah. know. Always has been. I think he had one that looked. Like it had a really nice. Uh, was it Studio Confessions, the cover. first one on ABB? Maybe or the other orange one. Yeah, Studio Confessions. This taste route's run out. Okay. Um, I like Studio Confessions, but I was just listening to random Pevin Everett records, um, files. I don't like to call them records, files, songs, um, and I realized how much I like him, how self-contained he is, and how you know how. You got to be confident to do your thing artistically. And he's confident and I think and because it's not the norm It's not the norm and it's his own and I don't think he has allowed the external forces that be to try to sh move him in a certain way from the way his stuff sounds, uh, the way it's recorded. That's the thing, it sounded real um I don't, I don't know how else to say it, but like not mix very well. Exactly. And I don't, I don't, I don't mean that to pass judgment on it, but compared to, you know, good mixing, whatever that norm is. Yeah, it, and it wasn't. You know, I mean, it's just, but it, I just, I enjoy. Like, I get caught in. I got caught up for about ten minutes. In what? What were you thinking? Digging on heaven. Yeah. I'm a bit. I'm ADHD a little bit, man. I'm all over the place, but like, it don't take long for me to get in and out of zone. You know what I'm saying? But I got, I like, yesterday, 
I, I realized how much I liked him, and like I want to play more of his records out. I want to play more stuff by him out. I'd like for you to share some of your favorites with me because I've listened to a lot of the albums. Um, I don't know much. I, like the songs that I have in my computer right now, yeah. I, I could look at them and tell. Did like, you get those from an individual? I got those from I think my man B Dub gave me those. Um, off the top, I'll just go with Studio Confessions, which again is really kind of irresponsible because that's the man's first record that really kind of caught fire. But I, I like some, right, I like some other stuff, Pevin. If you see this, I, I just I don't know the names of them. But uh, uh, one more time and. Uh, uh, Say It Back, I think, is the name of the joint that really kind of moved me. And it's another one, man. I don't remember the name. I don't remember the name of the other one, man. So. Quick break. Me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're talking about, um, while I was changing tapes, we are talking about just uh, DJing and, um, <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> and uh, files. I mean, nowadays, you used to have records. You can't give someone else a copy of your record magically, but you can give them a copy of your MP3. And um, and granted, you know, um, most of these things we're talking about are conversions of records, so it's not even like you can buy it on iTunes or whatever. But um, I was saying that I gave Beat Broker a bunch of, he gave me a bunch of his files, and I was going to give him some. And um, this will be interesting. Let's have Nisha say hi real quick. Oh, look, the, yeah, the mic's over here. Okay. Hey, Nisha, how you doing? Hi, baby. You're on the Miles Bonnie show with Jock. I am? Yeah. Well, hi. Hello. <laughs> hi, Ma. Hey, baby. Hi, you. I'm okay. How are you? I turned into a lazy frog last night and stayed home until the sea and your beautiful face. Oh, that's all right. If you feel like coming out, I'll be back there again tonight. Really? Yes, ma'am. Oh, baby. I get a retreat. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so happy. Did you enjoy it last night? Uh, I did. We had some technical difficulties that kind of dampened my joy, but overall, it was a good night. It's a good room, don't you think? Yeah, it's a nice room. Yeah. Yeah. That's the feeling I got about it anyway. I apologize to for, for dropping you on here. I wasn't sure what the tone of your call would be. I wasn't oh, sure, you know, what's going on over there. It doesn't matter, you know. It's like I'll just call him like, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. This cool. Is a nice day. Hey. hey. Well, hey, you, um, you will you will be a future guest, right? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, baby. Y'all go home about the business now. Uh, all right, Ma. Uh, good to hear from you. Love you. Love, Love you, you too. too. Bye. 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 That's uh, it's mom. Yeah, a friend of ours, mother's. Yeah. Leave it at that. All right, I guess we're running out of time, man. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I, uh, you know, I don't care if Beat Broker or Drew has all my files. As long as he doesn't play certain songs that I really feel like I found and no one else plays them and I love them and don't make it your song. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, again, aside from the order in which they're played, what? why am I even there then if I don't have anything new to contribute? We're going to get some records. Um, finish out this very DJ-centric show um, with a couple of Jock's picks. And um, yeah, and we'll we'll leave it at that. He'll be back. There's plenty more to talk about. If you want to hear some things, how about this? I didn't say this last show, but if there's certain people you'd like to hear from, I will consider it. Uh, more likely, if there's people that have already been on the show that you would like to learn things about that we didn't address, or you'd like for them to talk about next time, send me an email, um, innate sounds at gmail dot com, um, and in the subject title, just say question for guests or something or Miles Body show or something like that. I don't know. I'm not that organized yet. But um anyway, we'll get to it later. Thank you for being on the show. We're gonna listen to records. Yeah, we're gonna listen to some records. I'll be back with my with my cooking with jock segment. Ah oh, yes. <laughs> um my Twitter buddies know about your artichoke. Spinach dip? Spinach dip. I took pictures of it after I made it. And I must say since I made it the first time after seeing you make it. Yeah. And I came back and made it, it was good. Ever since then it's been horrible. Is that right? Yeah, so I need I you to make it. it. No, no, you didn't ruin it. You just do it well, and I don't. Yeah, well, it's good. I like it. All right. We'll get the artichoke dip. We'll do some other cooking yeah. another time. That'd be, that's what's up. As the show progresses. All right, get to the music. All right. I'm going to use another, ca uh, another camera, one of my assortment that we have here at the studio okay. to document this. So um, if the footage looks different, deal with it. Blah, out.
I need to get a, where's my Nate Sound slip mask? I gotta throw it on there. Yeah. Alright, so here we are. We're, we're filming. Alright, honorable mention. We're gonna do three records, but I'm gonna mention this. This is all it Okay, this is honorable, but it hears us. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Honorable mention, this is a great yeah, record. Man. So uh, I'm not going to play anything off of it, but <clears throat> I found this record one day actually shopping with you and Drew, and I love it. It sounds like Barry White because it is Barry White, and it's, his, uh, it's produced by Barry White, but it's his conductor, Gene Page. It's called Hot City, and it's, it's fantastic. It's just, it's just good stuff, period. I want to sample it. And, and steal from it, but it's fresh. So that's honorable yeah. mention. <clears throat> well, listen that off the air. And, and I really like uh, yeah, the yeah. piping. is See, sick. If I were better graph designer, I'd know how to do that sort of shading. That's fresh right there. But, so. I'm not. but okay, I'm going to start off with probably something that most people know about now. Um, I found <laughs> out about this record uh, over a year or so ago. Um, and I, I think the first person that probably exposed me to it was Kenny Dope Gonzalez. <clears throat> and he, he sent it to me to listen to on a mix CD. And I thought it was really, really great. Um, and I asked him what it was. He was kind enough to let me know. So for that whole year and change, well over a year when I first found out about it, I didn't have the record. And uh, I saw it and I was able to buy it, but I passed on it so much because... It was a $10 record, and I was like, oh, it'll be there, it'll be there, nobody knows about it. And then, the wonderful, is it Giles or Giles? I, Giles. Peterson. Giles? Yeah. Giles Peterson compiled it, and that's all she wrote. It's been going for 160 bucks. Uh, comes out on two different labels. This is the first label. Shout out to Northern Rob and Jimmy Superwolf Trotter for finally getting me a copy, yeah. uh, just so I can have it. Everybody knows it. It's a good record, and it's one of my picks for the day because I love it. And it's called Why Can't There Be Love, and it's by D. Edwards. And so, enjoy. Instead of making conversation, Not 
surprised I don't I haven't heard that before, but um, that's great. There it is, guys. Go get yourself a copy. It's a it's a technically a ten dollar record. Enjoy it if you like it. She also has another record <clears throat> that that uh, Jimmy hit me to. That's really amazing. Uh, the name eludes my memory, so you know you'll find it before me. Let me buy it from you. <laughs> now <There> it is. <clears throat> I'm torn actually as to what I'll play next. <clears throat> we, I mean, we play a couple. You know, I'm, there's no tape on this. You know, here's the thing, man. Once I get some. Uh, some donations jumping off, uh, I can actually get a hard drive recording video player, but this yeah. is working for now. This is working. And so, here's the deal. I like all kinds of music, but I have some, uh, some, 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 a few roots in Chicago that are really, really dear to me. Um, one of my favorite artists of all times is Curtis Mayfield, and so... I'm going to do, I'm going to play a Curtis Mayfield number that everybody knows. Everybody knows this record. But this is from Young Holt, Unlimited. Known throughout jazz circles as, you know, this wonderful jazz trio, Chicago-based. Everybody has a copy of Superfly. Well, Young Holt did a version of Superfly. They covered the album as well. Um, this is my favorite cut off of this. It's called Give Me Your Love. I love both versions, all versions. I play them all the time. But this, to me, is the perfect way for me to start a night out if I'm running late, which I'm always running late. I put this on and it calms me down. And it makes me think of my beautiful wife of 13 going on 14 years in May, uh, Nikki. And so this is my dedication to her and to you all. Give Me Your Love by Young Holt Unlimited. Enjoy. If it doesn't jump.
Okay. Is everybody relaxed now? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right. Everybody ready to eat dinner? I am. That makes me want to eat dinner. All right. <laughs> okay. So now, all right, I'm not... I'm not a big rare record guy. Me neither. So you know, to me that's it's just uh, it, it's over it's overhyped. Like I don't care how rare a record is, I don't care how obscure it is. I mean, uh, to me that's really unfortunate because good music needs to be shared. Granted, if you're fortunate enough to get a copy of a rare record in Dynamite, um, I don't have rare records. Dante Carfagna, uh Kenny Dope, DJ Spinner, DJ Shadow, Kev Dodge, I Ain't Right, James Trotter. Those guys have rare records. I don't have rare records. I have good music, and that's what it is. So this next <laughs> record, and they have good music too. Yeah, their no, music, no, no, is, no, their no, music no. is dynamite. But I don't have rare records because I'm not. I don't. I'm. I'm cheap, and I believe that some certain hipsters ruined it. Those guys aren't hipsters. Those guys are dedicated. Right. So, but here we go. This next record, uh, most people played the B side of it when it was compiled years ago, and I play. I'm sorry, most people play the A side of it. I play the B side of it because the B side of it means a lot to me. Uh, and it's on Zells. It's by the Cross Bronx Expressway. And it is called Help Your Brothers. So people, Kansas City and abroad, help your brothers. Here we go. to do that. I think I, mean, I should do just it. Just something real quick and dirty and yeah. it doesn't have to be perfect. It won't be perfect. I mean, because this, <laughs> I don't hear you, I don't hear these songs enough. Wow. And well, you, you, you know, familiar with them, you own them. Yeah. And these things, a lot of these things get back to the Serato and digital stuff, a lot of these things aren't converted probably, right? Like, you don't have the files. Um, Obviously, a few. Yeah. I mean, a few, you know, but not, not. Not many. I um. It's a different experience though, too. It, it, I remember when you first got Serato, we were talking about the um, the the, the timing. Yeah. Of actually touching the record. So for that sake, and since you own them and stuff, you know, 
Granted, I don't know whether you want all these songs to be out there. We can put drops yeah. in the middle of each one. Yeah, I mean, that would be fine, too, but I definitely want them to be out there because yeah. I want people to like them. I would feel... You know what feels good to me? Uh, what even feels better yeah. than uh, not... Th what even feels better than people saying, oh, that's dope, what is that? What even feels better to me is people hearing a record that that they don't hear often, but they know it. Like... It would blow my mind to go play Help Your Brother, for instance, somewhere, and people know the words. Good point. That would just, I would just be like, oh, that would kill, that would make my night. That's worth working towards, um, you know? Yeah. That's great. That's what's up. I hear you. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, that's a good, that's so I, I want people to know. Which is actually, I mean, the reason I thought about it probably because it's the flip side of most people. Most people that would play it, I would assume... You know, would not want people to know it. Yeah. No, I want people to know the records. I want them to sing them. Sing them. Yeah. Sing them. So that's it. You want me to play another one? What do I do? Uh, I mean, whatever. You know. I don't it's, care. You said three. I don't want to go. I don't no, wanna... no. I mean, how many more do you have? I only have. I, I, I can wait. I'll be back. All right. I'll be back. So, you know, th that was my three for today. All right. But, uh, yeah, I'll be back. All right. Well, um, this has been another uh, Miles Bonnie episode. Thank you very much to Mr. Jock Max. Hello. Goodbye. For uh, stopping by. I appreciate his time and his uh, thoughts. Um, I hesitate to tell you what's going to happen in upcoming shows, even though I know. I think it's kind of better to just let it be. Yeah. That also being said, um, for the audience out there that is not interested in completely DJ material regarding the show, um, it's not going to change my show, um, but... I will put little summaries, perhaps, at the top of um, descriptions for each show, so you can kind of decide, you know, whether you're going to pass on it or listen to it. Of course, I want you to watch everyone, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, um, there will be others, wide variety of guests, there won't always be music, but that's what I do, and that's what I care about, and that's what I think is worthwhile putting out there, so that's what my focus is. But, uh, much respect. Thanks. And, uh, deuces. Shut the deuces.